start recording for YouTube. <laughs> it's time. It's time for the 115 podcast. I need to move this over here so I'm constantly looking at the camera. So, welcome everyone to the first episode of the 115 podcast. I am your host, Mr. Kills 115. I'm not too sure. Mark is currently muted. I don't actually know if he's here or not. I hope you are, and you can hear me giving out to you. But welcome everyone if you are joining us here live on Twitch. Thank you so much for coming out. This has been something I've been talking about for so damn long. I it's been a very, very long time trying to get all this sorted out. Thank you to Kenny. Uh Mr. Kenny Sweets at Project Kenny on Twitter for the pre-stream overlay and this amazing overlay that he managed to put together absolutely brilliant and normally right, Mark would be on that TV as you can see over to that side of the overlay I'll say that but he's currently uh, not able to put, go on the camera so in future streams Mark will be over that way and I don't know where he's gone I seriously have no idea where Mark's gone he had one job. Where? He's here! <laughs> Were you here the I was whole here. time? I was here for a better intro than that. After all the intros, well, after you all did, these years. You didn't unmute off. yourself, so I just assumed that you weren't here. I was waiting for the... Finally! Making his return to Twitch.tv. Mhari10. Curly what? Curly what? Mole vibe. Okay. <laughs> Oh dear. So how are you doing? How, was how are we? I I'm good. I'm good. I'm very, very good. How are you doing? I'm good. It's, it's been a while. It's, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it has been a very, very long time. Especially for you. Not for me. I've been here every single day. Well, not every day. Every week. But it's been a long time for you. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's probably been about a year and a half since I streamed anything wrestling related. Yeah, I think it's been about that. I think it was... It was around the October time, wasn't I it? I think it was around October, maybe... Late, it might have been late October, early November, when you were done. Done, yeah, finished. Man. Time has flown. I know. You've gotten older. I've gotten older. I was already old. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, the facts remain. You know... <laughs> Right. So it's WrestleMania week. WrestleMania. Re WrestleMania week, and uh, this is this is seriously every year. It's always one of my favorite weeks as a wrestling it, fan. It always, even if it's bad, it always delivers. Yeah, even if it's bad, it always delivers. Like like what well, I I was lucky enough to be there last year live, and yeah, I, I was supposed to be. <laughs> things happened. Um, but as you know, like some of the other guys went, like Mac, who got me, Laws, and all that went as well. And I know they've like what's weird is they've completely different opinions on the whole event compared to me. Like they didn't really like it. They, you know, it was kind of like oh, it was great at the start, and then you know towards the end it was shit. I th to, right, I think it's my favorite WrestleMania. Just, just because. Oh, you've gone robot. He's gone R2 D twat. Have we still got you? I can You're still R2 D twat. Mark. Nope. <laughs> I miss this. I miss our 2D twat. I think it was majority of you that was always our 2D twat. Or was it so I think it was. I think it was I think it was always you that was our 2D twat, just constantly breaking. Have you rebooted yourself?
I don't think so. <sighs> well, I'll continue on anyways. But like, like, like I was saying, like last year the lads went, they didn't really like it. I really enjoyed it, mainly because of where I was and where I was sitting and the people around me. They just made it even better. Like, um, especially during the AJ Styles Nakamura match, there was this one random girl that just kept pronouncing Nakamura's uh, name wrong. I can't, what did she It was Shinsky. She kept calling him Shinsky. And this guy in front of me turned around and goes, Who's Shinsky? It's Shinsky! Get it right! And the whole, like, the, the whole thing was just brilliant. I think the AJ Styles Nakamura match, as watching from the crowd, was my favorite just for the crowd. They just made it brilliant. Have you fixed yourself? I think so. I yes. it was your end. I couldn't hear you. You couldn't hear me? I could hear you all the time. It's R2D2. Uh, yeah, you went all very C3PO. So you're, you're R2D2 and I'm C. Okay, we're going to make a name for C3PO. It's the height thing, I think. Probably. But what were you going to say when I was on about the Mania last year? I was just saying that. Yeah, things happen. I was supposed to be there, but uh, it was a really good one to watch, I think, because there was a lot that you knew were going to happen, Yeah. but you didn't mind it was going to happen. Mm. Like, we all know Cena Taker was happening. Oh, we all knew, but it was, it was still like a fun thing, especially like in the crowd. You know, we didn't know what was happen happening. We just saw a referee booting it down, and yeah. um, next you know, you see Cena, boot, you see Cena running up, and the pop was crazy. Because you just knew what was going to happen. Well, it was just like, well, he's intoxicated. You mo your moan when Jeff Hardy did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I really, like, many of last year for me was just so much fun and absolutely brilliant. But obviously that's, you know, only because I was there. Like, watching it back, watching it back, it's still good to me, but it's not as good as being there. You know, no, especially, I... like, NXT TakeOver. Which to this oh, day oh. is still the best damn NXT takeover there has been. I oh, let well. I'm guessing we're gonna bring up takeover later because oh my god, that yes. You've not watched the YouTube video and you've got 15 minutes spare. That Champa video. Whew. Oh yeah. Like, I'm. I remember. <laughs> Just a quick segue, uh, this is the very next day in the video, so there was a little bit of technical issues here between myself and Mark, uh, we think it was on my end, it, for some reason the call just kept dropping, so I've edited this part out because it was like, I think it was a good five minutes of me trying to re-establish the call, and I just thought, well, this needs a bit of you know background to tell you guys exactly what happened if you weren't there live, so with that being said, and now that you guys know, let's get back to the podcast. I don't know what the hell happened there. It was my side. I just kept awaiting the, um, the whatever it is. End point. Uh, he's gonna have his face. Uh, Mark can't have his face cam on right now, but he will in future podcast episodes when he's able to. Yeah. So unfortunately, it's not. I'm on my phone. Yeah. So he will be over in that box over there. Or I could just put the WrestleMania sign there and put him in the small TV. I'm, it's my podcast, so I'll decide where he goes. Is it, is it okay that I'm waving now? Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we might as well get into the festivities of this week. Yeah, the WrestleMania. WrestleMania week. So tomorrow night we've got NXT. Which <laughs> I'm not happy. It's on, I, I, I am happy it's on a Friday, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not happy it's on a Friday. <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> like, um, I understand. Like, it's, it's a good thing for us. It gives us a bit of a break. You know, NXT on Friday. Well, it gives me a break anyways. NXT Friday, I can sleep then Saturday because I don't watch the Hall of Fame live. I'd rather watch it next day. And then WrestleMania, which is eight hours long. Eight hours long. On they, they've shortened it this year, then. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> Like, eight hours, it's that, crazy. Like, they're like, yeah, the women may have invented. That crowd is going to be so tired and dead by the time that match comes around. Like, mate, by the time we got to Brock and Roman last year, I was tired as hell. 
like, here's a fun thing. We got to the Mercedes-Benz at 12 p.m. We left the Mercedes-Benz at 11 p.m. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, 11 p.m. It's a lot of wrestling. <laughs> and the thing is, and I know this now, to always have a phone with data or something on it when you go to a, uh, a WrestleMania. When you're in the, uh, the arena or stadium, whatever they have at WrestleMania, pre-show is so boring because really? there's there's nothing. There's no sound. You can't hear them. Oh, there's yeah. nothing. You are just left there, sit there and wait. Like there's there is like TVs like behind behind me. There's a TV with the, the thing on, but you can't hear it. Yeah, so until, was, the, until the like three matches you have. Yeah, until like the matches start. It's just you're bored. You're absolutely bored. Like I, oh, I, I, I was almost at the point. I was like, I just want to leave WrestleMania. Like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm so bored. The pre-show last week was wonderful. <laughs> like I, I, I didn't even go that like insane because I went to Elimination Chamber. I didn't even go insane at Elimination Chamber. You know, because it was literally an hour long with the cruiserweight match, which was fantastic mm. so you know we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get to how i feel about the cruiserweights later on but nxt yay take over without champa did you see the video oh my god did you see triple h oh i i'm trying to think what's gonna make me more emotional champa's my why or avengers endgame <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, Champa. Like I, I think so. <laughs> I start. I, I literally click play, play, and oh my god! Even Triple H, like, Triple H just couldn't hold the tears back to be like, you know, it, it's not happening, guys. Takeover is not happening. But ah, oh, it was supposed to be the end of that whole rivalry, and it oh, was supposed man. to be their end game. Yes. <laughs> ah. Go. Oh. King of the Segways here. <laughs> and here's our first sponsor. This April, Avengers Endgame. Takeover <laughs> Endgame. Tickets on sale now. But the, like something I realized is that meant that either Tommaso Ciampa or Johnny Gargano, whoever won that match, wasn't getting called up. Uh they're not they're hardly going to do a Kevin Owens again debatable because of the, whether because what we found is regardless of what happens in NXT it's kind of not canon to Raw or Smackdown so I don't know if they still would have come up as DIY I don't think they would have I don't think they would have um, as Ricochet and Alistair Black are apparently a tag team now <laughs> that's such a good thing but such a negative thing at the same time because they're both deserving of going to two different shows and being the top stars of both those shows. Like, it's absolutely crazy. And I got a fun fact about them uh, when it comes to it. So, like, okay. well, we might as well start with her. So, like, for the NXT Tag Team titles, the War Raiders are taking on the winners of the... Uh, Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, which is Alistair Black and Ricochet. And I don't know. Yes. If, I don't know if you've been paying uh, attention to NXT, because obviously I know you don't have the network. But uh, I, I've I've not watched it for about four or five weeks, but I've kept my eye on it. Not as much as I would have. Yeah. Like the the, the Dusty Rhodes, it seemed very. I don't know. It didn't feel authentic for the first time. Yeah, this year I will say it was very, um, it was it was very unusual. Um, I will say uh, I really enjoyed the DIY versus Undisputed Era match. That was one match oh, I, I knew I had, I had, to, had to check out. Yeah. Um. So, one team I thought should have won, and just because, I, for me. I feel that people should be pushed up. I thought the Forgotten Sons should have won the whole thing, because we know Black yeah. and Ricochet were, are going up, like they're going to main roster. So for yeah. me, the War Raiders versus the, the Forgotten Sons that would have been a good NXT match. 
I really thought this was Street Profits coming out of party as well. That's another team like that's very, you know, under uh, underdeveloped down there. That should be they, very they, high up. They invest, they invest in them in terms of character development stuff. Yeah, they just haven't given the storyline. So I'd like to see them, but so we ended up getting Black and Ricochet, and they did. They had a good match. I, I checked it out. They had a very good match with um, the Forgotten Sons. But a fun fact with Black and Ricochet, this is th th this weekend. There's no negativity for them. They've got an NXT tag title match. If they lose that match, they've then got a SmackDown Live tag team title match yep. at WrestleMania. They could actually, in theory, end this weekend as double champs. Yeah. So double double champ, <laughs> double tag team champs. Have we had that before? Well, if you don't count um, unification of the titles back, what ten? Wow, that was ten years ago. WrestleMania twenty five, the, the titles were unified. Actually, that's ten years ago. Damn, when uh, Carlito and Primo. Uh, unified the world and tag team titles. Ten well, years is a long time. That's I just think, I literally that just came to mind. That was WrestleMania twenty five or WrestleMania thirty five. Now that that's crazy. Um, you think the last movement was five years ago? Yeah. Like and that, oh, don't get started on that. You're a B plus player, Kofi. Are you are you listening to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to that later. But for oh, more yeah, Raiders, yeah. Alistair Black, well, I guess it's time to return something, Mark. It's a predictions title. Uh, I was literally about to drop your absolutely wrong then, but yeah. <laughs> no. Nope. Bring back the predictions title, you know, because I was the longest reigning predictions champion, technically, you know, just saying. Unofficially. It was, uh, it was an, um, un, oh, bloody hell, what did you call it? Unsanctioned. It is an unsanctioned match. <laughs> what, you mean when you try to screw me over with my title? No. So, War Raiders... Oh, Martin. Martin. <laughs> War Raiders versus Black and Ricochet. Who are you going with? War Raiders. Damn it, because that's who I go with. I, 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 don't, see, I don't see Black or... Um... I, don't, I think we're going to have very different things when we get to Mania. Oh, we will. Mania prediction. We will. I don't, I don't see Black and Ricochet walking out with the NXT Tag Team titles at all. No. Um, I think this is the last time we see them in NXT as well. 100%. Well, they, they've kind of already confirmed that to us. You know, I don't know if you see the, the videos, you know, of them saying goodbye to NXT yeah, and stuff. Yeah, Keith Lee and Belting. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I think they'll 100% be done with NXT after this weekend. Here's, here's one for you. If Champa wasn't injured... Do you think DIY were doing double duty this mat this night? No, because they were already eliminated. Yeah, but they eliminated him because of the injury. No, yeah, no, 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 no. They eliminated. So, to me, the storyline was just going to be a repeat of Chicago. We've lost. That's that, and then he's going to throw it to the stage. That one hundred percent. I don't think at all they were going to do double duty at all. You think cause they were coming up as a tag team? They came up as DIY. They were meant to be going into a thing with the bar. Yeah, yeah I can see what you... I, 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 I personally don't think they were. So I could quite easily have seen it, that this was the first match of the night. War Raiders win. Champa turns on Johnny. Boom, Johnny re literally comes out a la kind of Bret Hart, Owen Hart, WrestleMania 10. Yeah. He comes out at the end, beat and beats him. Yeah. And Johnny stood there, champion end of the night, champers. Broke. It's a good, it's a good pitch. But, eh. um, Fantasy booking. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a good pitch. Not a bad storyline, to be fair. You know, I don't, I don't think we've had that like in recent years. You know, start off with a tag match, then end in the world title match. So. Yeah. Um, the last tag. Actually, have matches was kind of like Mysterio Guerrero, weren't it? Yeah, I think they're. I I but, I could be wrong here, but I think they're the only tag team to ever go into WrestleMania fighting each other for the uh, with the as tag team champions. I think they're. Possibly. The, I think that's the last time we actually had something like that. 
So Braun and Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's too many, too many Undertaker versus Nicholas memes going around right now. <laughs> Who I think was it my mate uh, Jack or something sent me a, a thing of that, and I said Taker's gonna get these hands. <laughs> I'm in eighth grade now, boy. <laughs> Did you see the video? They uploaded a video to the YouTube of where are they now with Nicholas. I didn't watch it. I saw it. I didn't. I didn't waste my time watching it. And it's great because they don't like acknowledge who his actual dad is, and his actual dad is um, a referee with the WWE. He was in the match. Like, oh. <laughs> it's brilliant. They don't. I, they don't even give him a last name. They don't give his mom a last name because his dad is the ref. <laughs> so it was I, I I laughed my whole way through it like he even he got a damn t-shirt <laughs> like wow. it's crazy you know I, I'd, I'd love to see Nicholas return big big shock at WrestleMania they do, they do it all again with the uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal um, no unfortunately I think that's going to be something else <laughs> but moving on with NXT anyways the next match is a match I'm very happy. I, I wanted this on the uh, NXT TakeOver card so bad. It's Pete Dunne versus Walter for the UK title. Yes. I wanted that so bad. Unfortunately, it did take away... I don't know if it took away a match that I want, that would be good for the card, but this is still a decent match. So, like, Pete Dunne... It, Go on. It's hard, isn't it? Because you've got the NXT UK. But yeah. We haven't got... A an event over here to promote it up to something so it has to be takeover yeah because it, it's going to be frustrating it's like okay so we're going to go to all these shows build up the storylines but they're always going to finish in america yeah like well i think i think I'm just, I'm just, go on. i think soon enough i think this time next year we'll have an nsc uk takeover maybe a week oh we've, we've yeah possibly i think i think ultimately this is just a whole thing of we we've, we've got to have something over here in the next five to ten years we've got to have we've got to have a mania yeah so like that that, that that's well, if there is a mania i'm 100 percent going to it 100 000 percent oh, that's that's the holy grail isn't it it's wembley stadium it's got to be done like so with pete dunn is the longest reigning champion of the modern era i don't ask me how many days he's been champion. I can't, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, a lot. Over I think it's over six hundred days at this point. Um, uh yeah, take over Brooklyn. It was take over Brooklyn one, wasn't it? No, it, no, was, Chicago. it was Chicago when uh, Champa yeah, turned on Gargano. That like yeah. Still one of the best matches was Pete Dunne versus uh, Tyler Bay. Tyler Bay, incredible. So I'm hoping uh, they're not going to outdo that match, but I hope they you know keep on par with it like yeah, it's gonna be a different style of match because obviously the the people involved but i think i think it's going to be a solid wrestling story match yeah like i i obviously i know who pete dunn is i didn't like him first time i saw him now if he's done my respect i really really like pete dunn walter though I, I until he came to nxt uk i knew nothing about walter Nothing about yeah. Walter. He was, a, he was just a very cheap Vladimir Kozlov knockoff. <laughs> yeah, but like to hear the pop and everything, I'm like, all right, okay. I, I'm interested to see what he can do. So yeah, I, I really tomorrow night. I'll really be paying attention to Walter because I really want to see if is he as good as you know someone like Liam has told me he is, or. Yeah. You know, this is just another big guy. So when it comes to that match, who's your prediction? I'm actually... The fact they've elevated him so quick to this status, I'm actually going Walter for the win here. Now that's where we break off, because I'm going to go with Pete Dunne. I think they're going to continue the the title reign. I think the only the only way Pete wins this is by DQ or count out. I... I... I think the way they built it that NXT UK hasn't got that powerhouse monster heel yet hmm. and I think Walter is going to be that and I think to, to give him that heat it's, it's almost the same scenario I've got with one of the Wrestlemania matches coming up later is 
they have got an opportunity here to build a monster and have him be a monster and be a strong monster. There's no point in having a monster if he's losing every time he faces a good guy. And I think... Strowman. <coughs> yeah? No, I'm but saying Bart Strowman's I, I, that big I, I, guy that loses all the time and does nothing. Yeah. Well, he, no, he gets hot when it's uh, not WrestleMania season. And then by the time WrestleMania comes around, he's like ice cold. We'll just throw in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Two years running, he's been dead hot when you're like... Sort of coming up to SummerSlam Survivor Series. And then by the time Rumble comes around, it's like, yeah, I'm bored. Two years running, it's happened at Mania. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right, next match. And actually, before we go to the next match, so when I was talking with Pete Dunne and Walter and replacing a match, possibly, uh, one match I wanted to see on NXT TakeOver because I watched it on NXT and was Keith Lee versus... Um, I've crossed out his name now. Dominic Doze... Uh, no, no, Do Dominic something. I can never pronounce his last name, but Dominic now I saw at WrestleMania last year at Access. And it was in a match yeah. with Akira Tozawa. It was, it was a bit like the World's Collide Tournament, but uh, the winner got to face Pete Dunne uh, Mania Sunday at Access. And okay. it, was, it was actually one of the best small men versus big men match I've seen in a very long time. And at an Access show. Yeah, fair enough. Like, uh, the thing is, I can't go and tell people, like, go watch that match. Because you can't. Yeah. I like, though some of the house matches are brilliant because they, they don't have to... Th th there's nothing like stopping them from doing anything. Yeah. Like Akira Tozawa was just beaten up for a, lot, a big portion of the match and came back and ultimately ended up winning the match and faced Adam Cole uh, many a Sunday. But I watched... Who? Akira Tozawa. No, the other one. Adam Cole, baby. Ah, oh, him, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, and obviously we know he lost because Adam Cole was still the North American champion. Uh, but I watched Keith Lee versus uh, Dominic and it was a very, very good match on NXT. It ended in a count-out. And because it ended in a count-out, that was what made me think they were going to put on the TakeOver card. But unfortunately, they're not going to be a TakeOver. They might be on the NXT show for TakeOver, but they're not going to be on the TakeOver show itself. TakeOver quite often has that surprise match. So we had... Uh... Matt Riddle and Cassius. Yeah. That's so very true. That's very, very true. He, he is a very strange character at the minute. He is, isn't he? It's like, you shouldn't be any good. You are good. But it's almost like they don't trust you to be good yet. A bit like Kevin Owens, wasn't it? <laughs> when he first started yeah. out main roster, it's like, you mean, we know you're good. They know you're good, but they just don't trust you to be good. And then he yeah, just like, uh, shut out the park. A bit like Cassie Jones as well. Yeah. He's gone down to NXT UK now. Yes, I know. And then, obviously, they they did the Cassie thing with Elias, and then Elias went, and Elias got the, the rocket to the moon, and Cassie just hasn't. <laughs> I'm sure his time will come. I'm sure eventually he'll come up to the roster. Unfortunately, one thing I'm worried about when he comes up to the main roster is he'll get the No Way Jose treatment. Possibly, yeah. Uh, I, I can't see him. The thing is how how long he's been around. I kind of think you look at people that have been around and take a tight long time to come up, like your ties and your things like that, and your Tylers. There's there's no there's no long term planning in them. No, and that's if, what, they were, if they were going to the top, they'd be there already. And, and that's, that's why you see like that's one of the unfortunate so, things, like especially like recently with the release of Ty Dillinger, which must have crushed you. Yeah. Like, this guy was at the top of NXT. The one, 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 he's literally the William Regal of NXT. You know, the guy who's so good, but has never won the world title. Yep. And they had nothing for him, and he just asked for his no. release. I, I don't, I don't. I think it's be It's one of those that's best of both parties. Yeah. The worst part is that, the worst part is that day he was released. Moments before, I, I had bought a uh, a pack of cards and I got a one of ten Andrew the Giant Memorial card of Ty Dillinger. I was like, oh my god, it's so cool! I'll get him to sign this. Ty, WWE have come to terms with release of Ty Dillinger. I don't know what was more sad: the fact they released him, or the fact his real name is Ron. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I think I think he may be popping up in a city um, in America about May time. I don't know because I know like with Cody Rhodes, he said he like AEW is not going to be built on future endeavors. Yeah. From WWE, he said it's going to be our guys. But someone you did mention earlier on was Matt Riddle, and Matt Riddle this Sunday is going to be facing the Velveteen Dream for the NXT North American title. Bro. And this was supposed to be a triple threat match with Adam Cole in it. Hey. Adam Cole, baby! Oh, him. <laughs> he was supposed to be in this match, but unfortunately we all know. What happened? I, I, is it just me, or is the Matt Riddle thing not really got you excited? He's one of those guys is I accept is a top star in NXT, but I don't feel he's at that level yet. It's not, I don't, I'm like, yeah, I get, I get his ability. Like, don't take it away. He's an MMA fighter, you know. But I'm like, you're in WWE. You're walking around in flip flops, and then you're fighting barefoot, and you're just you you basically you're a mix between I don't know like a wannabe Ken Shamrock and a Rob Van Dam. You're walking around trying to be stoned, and I, I just, it hasn't clicked with me yet. No, I'm 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 exactly the same. You know, it's kind of like. Um... It's kind of like you, like I said, it, it, it just hasn't in my head clicked yet. You know, I ex, I, I, ex, I accept that they're pushing you, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna sit back. Maybe you might impress me some bit, some bit later on. And I think that is it. He's not had the match yet, which made you sit back and go, "Whoa, dude, this guy can wrestle." Mm. He's not had that match yet. Like he's been put in the big matches with. Um, you know they had with the what was it called again? The oh, halftime like, heat. The yeah, halftime he, heat. He's had those matches. He's had the the first ever NXT Madison Square Garden match. Was he in the halftime heat? He was, wasn't he? The Super Bowl one. He was. One sorry. No, he wasn't. In he Super wasn't. Bowl. He wasn't. Sorry, my apologies. No. He was he not. He was in the Fatal Five way. He was in the field of five way to determine uh, Johnny Gargano's opponent. He was in the Madison Square Garden match, the first ever NXT Madison yeah. Square Garden match. And he had his debut at a takeover. Which, you know what? It's Like I say, that wasn't a, a match. It was, what, 10 seconds? It had a story. It was brilliant. But I don't know. It's You want more. Smug, and I, know, I know that's his character. And it's like, okay. But, like, you've got the Velveteen Dream, which is the smugness, but, oh, my God, you've got the character that you're like, you know what, you're an arse, and I like it. I think I think one of the things with the Velveteen Dream is we've known him since... Like, we know him, we knew, we've known him before he was the Velveteen Dream. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I have respect for him because he's like me. Like, he's got that wrestling knowledge, and with the, the guy Tanner... When he came in and says, I'm going to be a star and you're going to be nothing. He said, you know what happens to MMA people who know nothing about this business? Nothing. Go ask yeah. Go ask the guy that lost to, that beat The Miz. And The Miz is up there. Why? Because The Miz knew about the business. The Miz respected the business. And that's why I was like, right, this guy, I support him 110% of the way. And then he came while Pat yeah. Patrick Clark came to NXT. But as the Velveteen Dream, but he wasn't the Velveteen Dream yet. He was still called Patrick Clark. And I was kind of like... Really, you give this guy, who I respect so much for his level of knowledge and everything, this type of gimmick. And he's taken that gimmick, and he has shot it to the moon. Yeah, he shows what you can do with a gimmick. Like, he, he, like Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes was never meant to get the polka dots over. No. And you look at someone like, and like Adam Rose. Yeah. He couldn't get that over, could he? Like got given chances, got given opportunities, couldn't get the reaction. Velveteen just mixes it up. He had like the Hollywood thing, and then he had the whole "I'm gonna knock you out in ten seconds." Boom, and then the whole crowd. 
the uh, into ten for him, and oh, it's just like I think one of the like smartest say. things Triple H ever did was put him with Alistair Black first. Yeah, hundred percent. The same my name storyline was and brilliant. Have Alistair beat him? Have uh, yeah, and then say his name. Yeah, you know you'll never. For, uh, I'll never forget the end of the match. Enjoy your time in infamy, Velveteen Dream. And even though he's and lost, he <laughs> even though he's lost the match, he's got a smile on his face because he said his name. He won the he won the battle. Alistair won the battle. Velveteen won the war. But you know they what the, the best thing about that story is, is that people haven't forgot it. You go back to the Fatal Five where we spoke of earlier on. As soon as Black and Dream were in the ring, the full sail. Oh, yeah. Say his name. Say yeah. his name. <laughs> when you've got people that like remember this, it, you know you've done something brilliant. Yeah, hundred percent. So, like, what's who? Who are you going with this match? I'm going Velveteen. You're going Velveteen. Yeah. Matt's not ready for a title. Well, I'm gonna take a chance. And I gotta go, Matt, because Ooh. just because I want Dream to, and we'll talk about this this type of stuff next week on the podcast. Yeah, the only way they can do this is if Dream is going for the title if, or going up on if Monday. He comes out with he called me up pants. I will probably lose it. <laughs> Vince called me up. I, as much as I'd love that, I petrified of him on the main roster it's it's really like nowadays it's really a hit and miss on main roster isn't it yeah because the, the thing about him is you see him like once a week once a fortnight sometimes that every uh, i don't know and i think that's what happens to a lot of the guys these characters work when you see him sporadically which i think is why nxt is so <laughs> successful that that's a really good thing. Like if you look at Enzo Amore, yeah, exactly. We all yeah, loved him on N- well, NXT. Ty Dillinger. We, st- we still love. We still loved Enzo on like on main roster. But every time you came out with that microphone, shut up, Enzo. It, yeah, it got repeatable, and you've had it. I'd say you had it with um, Tyler Breeze as well. Yeah. Because the second he turned up in NXT for that match, he's like, oh, my God. I'd even say Sami Zayn. Like, how often do you hear the Ole chants anymore? Oh, you don't. You don't. Look, look at how hot Shinsuke Nakamura was in NXT. It was such, like... NXT call-ups are always scary. Always yeah. scary. But we'll, 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 we'll put a pin on that. And we'll talk about that next week in next week's after Postmania and Shake Up <laughs> podcast. Stop talking to him. Talk to me. Sorry. <laughs> she's seen something on the table she wanted. <laughs> she's like one of those chi- She's like one of those children who's like, I want it. Okay, then get it. But I want it. Get it. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> I want you to want me to want it. <laughs> Yo, Rod, what's up? Welcome to stream, man. Uh, yeah, like, like we'll, 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 we'll talk about NXT call-ups and NXT and all that with the next week's Postmania and Shake Up. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Like, I can't it's wait. It's the for... one war and SmackDown I actually care about a year. <laughs> I still need to go to a post Raw and SmackDown mania. Yeah. Uh, next match, the second last match on NXT TakeOver card, is the NXT Women's Title Fatal 4-Way. Before, we have got a lot of Fatal 4-Ways this weekend. Do we? One. Both tag titles. Oh, dear God. The women, women's tag title and the SmackDown tag title. We've got this. Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> I've just now looked at my notes and like, oh my God, we do. I didn't actually notice that. It's almost like we haven't had a gauntlet match in a year. Let's have them three weeks running. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's throw it in. 
Uh, but we've Damn got it, I board <laughs> last match. We've got Shinny Baszler, Bianca Belair, Io Shirai, and Kyrie Sane. Have, have you have you paid attention to this uh, storyline? Yes, and uh, yeah. For me, and I think as was it the last NXT takeover that we had Baszler and Belair? Was it? The Rumble one. Yes. Yes. That match, I, I would say that match, the aftermath of that match really pissed me off. Yeah. But it was nothing to the do with, it was, not to, it was nothing to do with, um, sorry, I'm interrupting you, but it was nothing to do with, just let everyone know, it was nothing to do with Triple H or NXT or how the match went. It was certain fans afterwards that really pissed me off. Okay. Um, I'll let you say what you were going to say first. No, it's... Bianca's another one that... She was slowly building, like, you know what? You've got a real good talent here. Boom, you're banging on that she's undefeated. No, don't put that pressure on her. All of a sudden, you're putting pressure that when she loses, that's it. Mm. And it's like... And Shayna Baszler, I think, is one of the best heels in the company. She is basically what they want Ronda Rousey to be. To... Just to the, the uh, Joe, I'll, I'll say that when I go on my rant. So continue right. what you were going to say because I've had a very long rant. No, so the, where the women's division is at the minute for the NXT, I, uh, it's it's they've got a lot of talent, but they, I think they've missed like a few months build. Do you know where like when the the four went up. Mm-hmm. They they had ready made replacements. You had Ember, you had Asuka, and they held it down. And yeah. I think you've only had one strong person come in. Kyrie can't talk, so you've not literally. Shayna has held that division down since Asuka and Co went up. Yeah. So I don't see anyone but her retaining here because I don't see anyone that can carry that at the minute. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, back so for my rant. I 100, when it comes to Shayna Baszler, I 100, thousand, thousand percent agree with you. Shayna Baszler, no matter what these certain, what these fans say, and they said the same thing about Ronda, I can agree on some parts, I can, I can disagree on others. Shayna Baszler is one of the best damn heels, heel women in the WWE today. 100%. There, there is no one better. And just because, and I hate, I hate, because I, I understand people do with Jinder. I never did this with Jinder Mahal because I accepted his role. I accepted what happens as a heel with backup. Oh, they use, they use the other people to win. That's a terrible thing. What a terrible thing for character building. That's the best thing you could give them. Yeah, it's clever. That's the best thing I could give them. You, and the one time you can't, I can't beat you, I got a plan B. Triple H said, there's always a plan B. Exactly. Bianca Belair, as you said, only thing she had going for her outside of how, you know, good her, how good her character is and how good she is in the ring was the undefeated streak. Mm-hmm. But Not anymore. Once that was gone, do you know what she has going for her now? She's one tough SLB. Why? Because she, would, she refused to tap to Shayna Baszler. Yeah. She refused to let Shayna Baszler win. She was in the chokeholds for so damn long. Now she's not only good in the ring, she's a tough SOB, and people just couldn't see that. And after the match, I said this to my mate Jack, I was so pissed off the people going to Triple H saying, you're delusional, you don't know what you're doing with the thing. Do you realize this man has just made her better by adding to her character? It's one of the few finishes they rarely do a no tap out. Like one of the most iconic things in the whole of WWE history is somebody not tapping out, and he did, went on to be pretty well. It, you know, he was one. It was one test, <laughs> one tough sob who loves to drink beer. You know, and those things can never add to Brett. <laughs> those things add to characters, and that's when people afterwards went like, "Oh, she should have won." Now that. The- the streak's over, it's all ruined, it's done, it's it, she's screwed. And I'm like, did you not watch the same match I watched? Yeah. She took Shayna Baszler to the effing limit. 
I think the last time they had a woman in NXT not tap out, if I'm not mistaken, Bailey didn't tap to Asuka. Did Bailey didn't yeah? tap to Asuka. She passed out. She passed out. So, to me, I thought that match at TakeOver on Phoenix was great. Brilliant ending. It's uh, the only ending they could do to keep it relevant because she wasn't ready for the title, but to give her, you know what, this girl's sticking around. Yeah, exactly. Um, Kyrie Sane, I think, is, even though she can't talk, I do like Kyrie Sane. I like Kyrie Sane a lot. I don't think she's going to win so, uh, tomorrow night because I think she's going to go. I think she's going to go up. I'll talk about that next Possibly. week. Uh, Ayo Shirai, I don't know Ayo Shirai enough to talk yeah, about I, her. I've not, I've not seen anything. I've got, I've all I've got is Mae Young classic highlights. Really good in ring, gets a lot of hype from the crowd. Who are you though? Ex ex exactly. So for me, the smartest thing to do here is put the title on Bianca. Ooh, brave me! Ah. Mm. For one thing and one thing only, Baszler goes to main roster. I 100% agree. The only way Shane is losing this is if she's going up. And why is she going up to main roster? For a okay, SummerSlam match. 4v4. 4v4. Why are you saying... the other team can't wrestle yet. <laughs> well, why are you saying that? Huh. Well, let's see. Let's go back to the Royal Rumble when Sasha Banks lost to uh, Ronda Rousey. Oh, I know. March back out. She turned around to her and she put up the four. Four fingers. But she's been doing that. Uh, I, uh, this me is... is... The smart move for me here is Bianca gets the pin and Shayna seals it. Yeah. Okay. One of them, the all three, all three of them eliminate Shayna. You know, we team up. We make it between us. Let's get rid of this threat. Takes out the two helpers. And then Bianca probably takes out Kari, I'd say. Hits the finish in. Shayna throws her out. One, two, three. Bianca still looks strong. Kari's going up, so it doesn't damage her. So, yeah, that's I'm good. going Shayna. I'm going Shayna. Okay. And then our main event of the night. Unfortunately, could be the fairy tale ending to. No. Nope. Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, due to injury. And if you, ah! have, if you haven't watched the Tommaso Ciampa video yet on, on YouTube, I go check it out. Uh, is Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano two out of three falls? What are your thoughts? Johnny wins. <laughs> he, he has to. He's, he... Clearly the dog Johnny disagrees. Wins. She just bit me trying to bite a toy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not the, it's not the match we want, but if two people can throw a match together in a few weeks, build it, it's these two. I 110 percent agree. Because when the match happened, when the fifth five way happened, I remember I was I was just going to bed and I said I watch it. Whole whole episode, I thought only person I see winning that is Adam Cole. I don't see yeah. any of the other guys winning because I knew I already at the time I already knew the result to the, the Dusty Classic. Is that right? It's not going to be Black and Ricochet. There's so, <laughs> not a chance. Matt Riddle is going to get a world title shot, and Velveteen Dream already has a title. So I said, right, Adam Cole is the only one. It, it's a win for whoever walks out because there'll be a first time NXT champion, but it's yeah. a lose for us because it's like you guys are going to go main roster. What you you're not gonna go main roster. So like, if Adam Cole loses, it wins. Undisputed Era stays in NXT. Johnny Gargano wins. Johnny Gargano stays in NXT. Yeah. And both of them equally deserve to be an NXT champion. They're both equally good. But for me, the person who I would love to see as NXT champion more is Adam Cole. So Ooh. I'm going to put my bet on Adam Cole. Okay. I'm going Johnny for the simple fact we've never had a Grand Slam NXT champion. That's a, that's that's actually that's a, that's a very good analysis. <laughs> and I just want... He's my favourite wrestler currently. Like, the last two to three years, he's had the best storyline. He's had the best matches. 
He's been heel. He's been babyface. It's it's Johnny Wrestling time. Yeah. Johnny Mania, Johnny Mania time. I 110% agree. Like that's actually a really good. That's a really good statement. It would be a first time thing. Not, never okay, done you're before. Not your mind. <laughs> what? That'd be a first. Got Adam Cole. <laughs> I'm sticking with Adam Cole, and it'd be a big, you know, Mamma Mia moment for Marmonello. Oh, I think there's gonna be a few. So, that was a really good statement. <laughs> Damn it, he's smarter than he's smarter at this shit than I am. <laughs> I I've gone away and practiced my trade. I'm literally <laughs> Drew McIntyre. I could have gone to any podcast in the world. <laughs> Instead, I came here. I came right here. <laughs> to twitch.tv slash kills and five. Subscribe today. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's NXT anyway. So, the only match in NXT that we really have, like, the same opinion on is the tag title match. That's good. Opinion breeds debate. Yeah. So, but I'm, look, I, I'm looking forward to taking over. I think, I don't think it will be beast last year I think I, I think it's with me I'm very biased I don't think any NXT takeover were beast last year's one due to the fact that it's such an amazing opener and such an amazing closing match but yeah, I, yeah on, paper, on paper it's not as strong a card as a lot of takeovers but I think Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano the fact that it's two out of three falls could steal the whole freaking could weekend. Could steal the whole weekend. <laughs> well, we, we already know because it's happened every year. No matter what, NXT is stealing the weekend. Takeover is better than Mania. <laughs> NXT is always better than WrestleMania. It's been a fact since WrestleMania in Dallas. It, they've always stole the show. Yeah. So, I'm, look, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to <coughs> NXT tomorrow night. I think it's... As I was saying, to them, I was saying on the stream earlier on, I'm happy it's tomorrow night because you know I don't watch the Hall of Fame live, so it means I've got a break, I've got some sleep time. I think it's a smart move. But as, at the same time, I'm also like a wrestling fan that likes back-to-back wrestling. So, but I'm looking forward to NXT very, very much. And by the way, unlike how we did it on your stream, NXT counts for the title. Okay. So, with NXT done, we're on to the show shows. I know you, I was going to say, I know you want to say it. Yo, JD, what's up? Thank you very much, JD. Thank you very, very much. So, what, what are the things with this WrestleMania that is crazy is how many people are going to retire? And how many matches we have? <laughs> We've t- it's eight hours! Eight hours! 17 matches. <laughs> I will be sat on this chair this Sunday for eight hours. I'm probably not eight, probably about six because I don't I, I don't think I'm going to do the podcast. Uh, not the podcast, sorry, the pre-show. I don't think I'm going to stream the pre-show. I'm not too sure yet. Um... What the other pre-show we've got the cruiserweight talent match I, I don't know if they've actually announced any other pre-show match other than the cruiserweight one it's not eight hours punk chat rod that's eight hours sitting in this chair watching wrestling non-stop at this screen while streaming right here at twitch.tv slash kills one five it's gonna be a absolute like I've got Four cans of monster in there because, as JD knows from past uh, pay per view streams, I always have a can, uh, one can of monster to get me through the whole show. One normal pay per view is about three to four hours long. I'm going to leave at least three monsters for this one. So, WrestleMania is going to be a big, big grind. But as I said, one thing is the sure amount of of retirements we're going to have this this Sunday. Or are we? Well, we've definitely got Big Dave. Big Dave got is going to retire. Three guaranteed. And Kurt Angle. Yes. And possibly... 
Triple H. Game over. So, like, it's gonna be... It's gonna be emotional. Mm. I'm probably gonna cry when Big Dave walks to the back. <laughs> but... Triple H versus Batista. What? Is that where we're starting? What? Here's one for you. Who's who's opening the show? Who's opening the show? Ooh. You go first while I look back through my notes of the matches. I think you're getting AJ and Randy. It's one of it's one of two, I'd say. It's either that or it's Shane and Miz. I think we're gonna start with Shane. Shane likes to open the show. Like he pitched for him and uh, AJ go first. I'd say he's gonna pitch for him and uh, take it to go first. Do you know what? Let's let's give that bonus points to whoever gets that right. I'm going Shane and Miz. Who are you going? I'll go AJ Randy then. AJ Randy. I just think it's like, oh, say can you see? <sighs> Red Arrow slides over. <laughs> so, darkness. <laughs> I hear voices in my boom. Crowd's like, yeah, we sat here for two hours of pre show. We're ready. Well, if it's Shane, though, will they kick off a promo again? Like, like WrestleMania. Um, what was it? WrestleMania 30. I went to 34, 33. We're all connected. We're all connected. So I just hope that you can actually sit there and watch a Shane McMahon match at WrestleMania for once. <laughs> yeah, there's no distractions this year. <laughs> <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing, my son. <laughs> I'm not going to explain that joke, joke to the stream. We're, we're in an era now where I can't explain the joke to you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and commit to sitting six hours at least. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> JD, it's going to be a great... I'm literally, I don't think I'm going to do the pre-show the pre at all. I'm going to sit here and watch it. Probably sit inside the uh, the living room with the family and watch it. But I'm definitely not... I don't think I'm going to watch that here. Uh, but on to Big Day versus Triple H. We're having a retirement here no matter what. Martin? Uh, yes. You know what I want. That is the biggest meme now. I see it everywhere. Like, <laughs> give me what I want. Give me what I want. You know what I want. You know what I want. <laughs> but like, this was one match that we suspected was gonna happen. But then Triple H got the injury, and we thought it was off. But I'm very happy it's happening. You know, like I was. Was it the night after Chamber? That happened or something like that. I know it was I was in America at the time after the Elimination Chamber, and uh, I jokingly put up a tweet like, "Where's Big Dave for Ric Flair's celebration?" Joe, because he's part of Evolution, and then out of nowhere, Big Dave. And I, I, if you guys have seen the video of me when I popped for Andrade's call up, imagine that just ten times worse and screaming. <laughs> I this is a perfect example of how you can build a wrestling feud in just 10 minutes four promos that have taken no more than 10 minutes yeah other than like the the um, give me what I want segment they've not yeah. really done much like if you go back to the first one was just like the first time with Flair um, it was just he pulled him out yo Daz he just pulled Flair out and goes um I've got your I've attention got now. Your and then the really weird. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> it's like his voice broke as he did it. <gasps> <laughs> um, Can I say the best, the best line? Like, you had the kiss my ass, Hunter. That was good. You had uh, your little cronies here, the uh, Guardians of the Independence. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was good. That was really, really good. I think I, I think the best promo, uh, the best segment so far was the one that just that, that happened this past week. You know, with kiss the my kiss ass. my ass, and just the fact yeah. that all he did was he came out, put into the Tron. Oh. They had that really good promo of you know, he's done everything, but he's never beat me. 
And then it was just kiss my ass, drop the mic. I think that was okay, absolutely then. brilliant. Okay, I'm putting you on the spot here. Who's winning? Who's winning? Mm. I... See, it, 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 it's a tough pick because if somehow, you know, Big Dave does stay, um, it builds to him and helps him out. I personally think Triple H will win, though. I think the game is going to walk out because... This is what Batista, this is what he's always said he's wanted. This is what he said he wants to end his career on is a match at WrestleMania with Triple H. Yep. So I think Dave's career will end, but I, I don't think Triple H is done just yet. I, I'm i going to go against the grain here. I'm going to go, they're both done. Ooh, so you're going with Dave? I think I'm going with Dave because I think this latest injury for Triple H has kind of gone, you know what? The pec injury, he's, he's get what? He's 50 now? Around that age, yeah. I, yeah, I think it's the end of the game because the only other way is if, he, you know, he goes out to a younger guy, but I think story sense makes the fact Dave ends it and he's never beaten him. I'm kind of talking myself out of it now because I'm thinking no, because he's never beaten Dave, so he should beat Dave. <laughs> but I'm going to go that Triple H is calling time. He's going into the Hall of Fame. He's probably going to be like the first four time Hall of Famer by the time it's all done. But Speaking of the Hall of Fame, so we're not going to touch on it because I, I personally. I know the Hall of Fame is a big deal, but I never really cared to watch ever watch no. it live. Um, there are so many two-time Hall of Famers this year. Yeah. Shawn Michaels, yeah. Booker T. Um, who else is going in again? I'm trying to think off the top of my head who Brett. the hell is he going to be conducted. Like, yeah, Bret Hart. Like, Ric Flair who was always the only two-time Hall of Famer, and now it's just it's gone. I think I think they're all valid though. They are. They're all valid. They're all valid. Um, one person I, I I know I don't know this person, but like one thing I was happy with was the Warrior Award because that's they focused on like you know people with with like cancer and stuff like that who've beaten it and overcome it and stuff like that, and that's fine. But what Warrior wanted it was the people backstage who never get any credit never get any credit for what they do and the hard work they put in. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So I was happy that it's actually someone that's worked with the WWE for years and are finally uh, going to get credit. That's no problem, JD. So I, I was very, very happy with that. Um, so back to WrestleMania. Another very, very... Uh, big match that's going to be happening, which I'm... It's finally confirmed. Kofi Kingston is getting a title shot. It's only taking a little... Oh, my God. I'm so angry. Can we go, can we go back to SmackDown here? <laughs> For four weeks, he has not spoken. He is so, there, sour-faced. Picks up the mic. It's like, here we go. This is going to be the promo of his life. Up oh, bottom of the screen. Miz and Mrs. premieres in two minutes. Someone in it today, you've got 40 seconds. It's just how they've done... Yeah, but... A 10-minute promo it, of, this is my life. It You're also, saying I'm it also could be where, a thing of, that could add to the storyline, you know, like, he wouldn't give me a title shot, and he wouldn't even give me promo time. Possibly, but I was just like, that's, that's your CM Punk pipe bomb. That is your, you keep hitting me down Daniel and I'm coming back 11 years I've been told I can't do this and yet here I am you know how this ends you've seen this yeah. this is my this movement a guy like me can't make it I come over I overcome the Viper I overcome the Samoan and you know what when they said I couldn't do it I had brothers back me up it's all that it's like it was just like 40 seconds I'm like oh god 
don't get me wrong, those 40 seconds were amazing, but that could have been more. So much more. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. Like the the, the three women, their their storyline has been great, but this has been my favorite storyline, my favorite storyline by far. With the fact that we had the chance of it for Fastlane, that then got taken away from us, and it was like it it it, it made you want it more, you know. And the WWE, I'm, you know, my mother says it so well. That, you know, the WWE is so good at doing that, you know. You, you at first like. Yeah, I kind of want it. Yeah, you know, Kofi Kingston, yeah, give me a chance. But when they take that opportunity away, it's like, no, don't take it away. I want it. I want it. And you yeah, and it's, you, it's, you get invested. This was never supposed to be happening. And then I, I have, we have it. I, 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 I went to the Elimination Chamber, and I have a video on my phone of the last seven minutes of the match. And the, the last seven minutes, of, uh, I'm an idiot because I covered, like, the, the sound part. So you, I can't really hear the crowd. The place was deafening you couldn't hear yourself cheering for Kofi Kingston because it was so loud and it was absolutely brilliant the Kofi chants everything I even lost my voice at the end of the damn show because I was I happen organically sometimes and you you've got to ride the momentum like I was I was happy for Mustafa Ali who was finally getting a sh sorry I was happy for Ali who was finally getting a shot at, uh, a shot at the W title and to me Ali coming to Smackdown Live and stuff like that was a good show like you might be on 205 yeah it is a good show but if you put your effort, your heart your soul and put all the effort into this we'll reward you Ali was a good good example of that unfortunately he got hurt Kofi Kingston was thrown in but because Kofi Kingston was thrown in it's given us an amazing storyline of I've been here okay. for 11 damn years Never had a shot one on one of the title. I want my shot now. You heard the crowd in Houston. I want my damn shot right now. Saying that, who's winning? I go with Kofi. I I don't think they're gonna give up on this. Like at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, well, they gave up on Rusev and they gave up on Nakamura. I I just I can't see Kofi not winning this. <laughs> I'm going Brian. <clears throat> Loser. You want to get heat? Oh my god, you end. You end that. Yeah. Just imagine that. The crowd will just be... Damn. <laughs> Unfortunately, Daz, she doesn't have a match. Uh, you know, she's, she's, she's the... Uh, what's it called again? The host. Uh, but going down now from like the big big matches, um, one match that hasn't been confirmed. I mean, we we spoke about this has not been confirmed by the WWE, but has been confirmed by people who went to Access and purchased the WWE uh, the WrestleMania program. The Raw Tag Team titles will be on the line when the Revival face Hawkins and Ryder. Kickoff show. The, the streak is ending. The streak is ending. It's gonna happen. I love the revival. Everyone knows I'm a big revival fan. But I've always said it. I've said it. I, I was saying this to Mark before this, the this podcast went, went live. I've always said Hawkins was going to end the streak by winning a title at WrestleMania. I love the revival, but I think the streak is going to end. Yeah, we're going to agree on that one. <laughs> so, okay, we've actually got a, a, a prediction that's on many a card, and we're both going the same. Which I, means I, revival is probably going to win. <laughs> I love, I love my boys' the revival, but I've got to bet against them on this one. So, and if you guys, if you guys uh, want to see that the match has been confirmed. Here is a tweet that someone put up uh, of a picture from the program, and they're down as a match. And like, the reason I know this is like going to be confirmed is Taker and Cena was down on the program last year. I can go to the program now if I if I wanted to, but I don't want to do the podcast. Uh, their, their match was down last year, and then it did happen. So, 
Uh, but I mean, I'm excited for that one. I'm very, very excited. Uh, Hawkins and Ryder are finally getting an opportunity. Um, another match. Ryder the Mania moment. Yeah, and we we'll, we'll might as well stick on to the tag team titles. Uh, the SmackDown tag title match. The Bar, the Usos, yeah, yeah. Uh, together. Ricochet and Black, and oh, damn, who's the last team in it? Rusev and Nakamura. I'm not happy with this match. I'm really not. Thrown together, no reason. It, it's 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 not even that. Well, there is a reason, obviously. It's punishment uh, for what they did with the Usos. Yeah, uh, I get that. But... but I think the wrong teams were picked. I think the wrong... Like, the Bar and the Usos? Perfectly fine. I got a little excited because I kind of skipped through part of the match on YouTube. And um, when I saw a bald head, I was like, oh my god, please don't Gallows and Anderson are, you know, getting a shot at WrestleMania for the tag titles. And it was just Ricochet and Black and I thought, really? Really? And then I seen Rusev and Nakamura and I thought, really? Come on. Like, these are the teams you're going to stick. To me, it should have been the Usos, the Bar, the Hardys, and the club. Yeah. The, uh, Ricochet and Alistair Black if anything, should have been going against a revival. Yeah. You know, like, why have they jumped from the Raw Tag Team titles to NXT Tag Team titles to SmackDown Live Tag Team titles? It just, to me, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of this matchup. I'm probably not going to care of this matchup. Uh, I'm just going to put my prediction down as uh, the Usos to win. I'm, I'm going to Usos as well. No, you know what? We'll, we'll mix it up so we're not going to say one. I'll go Ricochet and I'll Black. Um, like I, I, I was not happy with it. Like, I, I just felt that like the wrong teams were picked here. You know, Alistair Black and Ricochet, yes, they deserve their Mania moment. But, you know, for, for NXT guys, that Mania moment was always the Battle Royal. Yeah. And speaking of the Battle Royal... <laughs> When I say Us, you say I think a lot of SmackDown matches were thrown together, is what I'm kind of realising. As much as I I think SmackDown is the best show, um, a lot of, like, like you said, a lot of the matches have not been thrown together, but some of the stuff and some of the decisions they've made have been pretty negative. Uh, yeah. We'll get to that in a match later on. Uh, but what a match the Andre the Giant Memorial Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal definitely kick off <laughs> who's winning it I can only tell you three people that are in it and I can only tell you one point. person that's in it <laughs> but no, the, the, the host guys are in it as well aren't they oh they are aren't they yeah so just Che win it or does Braun win it <laughs> <laughs> well my pick I, I, I don't know I, I, I don't know many people that are in it I believe the Hardys are in it um, I'm pretty sure Black and Ricochet were supposed to be in it I'm pretty sure the names were down for it uh, I'm going Braun Strowman because he's the only person I know that's in it and the other person I believe really needs to win so that's my pick I don't, what, 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 who are you going with? <sighs> Um, I've got to go Braun, haven't I? Because I don't even know. Who, is it the Saturday Night Live guys or something? I don't even know them. Nope. Don't even know why they're in it. <laughs> like, I know you touched on this earlier on, but Braun Strowman, every time he's the most over person going into WrestleMania, they push him mm -hmm. all the way to WrestleMania. And then he's stuck in a battle royale or some sort of, like, Stupid match he doesn't need to be in. Gimmick. Like, 33, he, he was finally getting over, and they stuck him in the Battle Royal. Last year, he was finally getting, you know, it was really, really over, and he was stuck in the Raw Tag Team Tele match just to win the titles and drop the titles the next day. This year, he had a shot for the Universal Championship. And now he's in the Battle Royal. I never had the shot at the Universal title. What happened? What are you? What, what is the WWE doing with this guy? Like, 
Are you going to push him? Are you going to start? It's literally Rusev times 10. Push stop, push stop, push stop. But it's frustrating because he is talented. He is good. He is a worker. But you, you, at some stage, you've got to give him that. You know what? We'll give it you. Give the ball and run. If he'd won it in Crown Jewel, that was the that was the time. Crown Jewel, you know, fun little thing is, um, I was gonna watch that event, but I for I, me not thinking, I had uh, already like planned to go out with a few mates, go bowling and stuff like that. So I ended up missing Crown Jewel, and just to come back and just see all the negativity for it and see the results, it's kind of like. I'm kind of happy I forgot okay. about Crown uh, Jewel. I've never watched it. I'm not going to lie. I've not watched it. To this day, there's three pay-per-views I've never watched. Roadblock from 2016. Fastlane from 2016. And Crown Jewel. Fair enough. Elias is the most underrated superstar at the moment. 110%. 110%. He should have won the Intercontinental title from Seth Rollins at, I believe it was Money in the Bank. I think it was, yeah. And it just, like, he's another person who's, like, getting a big show type of push. You know, he's, he's a face, he's a heel, he's a face, he's a heel, he's a face, he's a heel. You know, it, it's crazy that they've not, like, shot that guy. He's to the curse of he got himself over in WWE didn't like it. Like... What to it happens? Exactly. Um, he need for me. He needs to. He needs to be more of an in-ring fight. They're just giving him a guitar and giving him a little bit. Said no, let him fight because he can bloody go. He can wrestle. One of my favorite Elias moments is uh, Fastlane. This this year's Fastlane. You know, they used him perfectly. They used him to tell a story. You know, he told the story of the pay per view. You know, like, oh, he's got his ass beat, blah, blah, did the song. Oh, this person got their ass beat, did the song. And they did the final song. And I thought, you know what? That's the best way to use them. That's, that's the best way. If you're going to put a guitar and stuff on him, he's a storyteller. So. Well, how long does that go? Does that go a month or two? And then you're like, well, what's he actually doing? The worst thing they can do at Mania for Elias is he comes out, plays a guitar, like. Stone Cold comes out and stuns him, or Rock comes out and Rock bottoms him. Yeah. Which that's the only thing I can see him can see happening with him. You know, or the lights go out and Taker comes out and tombstones him. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's, um, that's the only thing I see, and it's a shame. He's more than that. Exactly. Like Elias is just that damn good. Sticking to the tag team titles, we've got the uh, women's tag title match. Usos. <laughs> Women's tag title match. Oh, the Fatal Four Way. So you've got the Iconics, the Hug and Boss Connection, the Divas of Doom reuniting, and the Wannabe Divas of Doom. Yeah. Who are you going with? I'm going, I, I'm going to go with Sasha and Bailey. Common sense dictates that your first ever week Women's Tag Team Champions need to have a long reign. But after seeing this Monday night, I'm thinking someone might be back for a bit longer than just WrestleMania. Ooh. So. And Naya, got, Naya and Tamina. No, but you've also got, you know, you've got Jim the Anvil Nightheart going in. First year that he's not there at Mania. Yeah. And you know what? When's the last time they give Natalia something damn good to do? Yeah. That's a good point. So I think this could be, you know what, this is just a farewell tour for Beth, and it's also a farewell tour for Natalia. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. So I'm going to go for the Divas of Doom. I, I'm not going to lie. I personally thought you were going to go with the Iconics. Eh? I thought you were going to go with the Iconics. I want the Iconics to win. <laughs> I don't see Naya and Tamina winning at all I don't see them ever holding the titles like they're such a, I, I, I don't know like there's so many people that say you know 
they can be a good tag team, and you know that's me and all that's underrated. But ugh, they're so boring to me. Yeah. As I said, I'll, I'll give I'll give Naya a juice. She has come on leaps and bounds. Tamina is just so below where the women's level is now. Like, I understand. I'll fight to the end for someone like Apollo Cruz, who I think is so desperately underrated. Just needs to get a character or get have, get give him something to work with. Yeah. But like, to have some like. Like Tamina, and I gotta say it, it's Fox. Sometimes Naomi, they're very boring. <laughs> Even when they're intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, Sam, thanks for following. Do we need to account? It's the potato. Yes, it is me. I'm back with a podcast. Um, so you know you're, you're sticking with Beth and Natalia. I'm going to go Beth Natalia. Okay, then. Um, well, we're going to move on from tag team matches now. That yeah, is the... I'll it for <laughs> yeah, thank God, oh God, thank God. One match that is possibly... Is, it's on the line right now. It's very on the fence whether it's going to happen right now. It's the United States title match between Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio. Yeah, injury concern, isn't there? Here? Mm-hmm. So we're going to two little things here. Who wins... If the match happens, who replaces if the match doesn't happen? Right. I'm fantasy booking here because, right, can I say what I think will happen if he's injured and what I want to happen? If Go he's with injured? it. If he if he's legit injured, I think they may pull, and this will take away from another match, I think we may have a... <laughs> What I want to happen is, ah, uh, I'm injured, Samoa Joe. I don't know what to do. Who will avenge me? Wait, Mysterio Jr. Oh, God. No. Keep he Dominic wrestles. away from the match. He wrestles. <laughs> keep Dominic away from the match. He wrestles. And keep him away from ladder matches. That was that was something else. So you're going with, right, you've got to pick one. You gotta pick one. So I think, I think he's injured, quote unquote, and I think Dominic gets destroyed, leading to a Mysterio Joe match at Extreme Rules is next. Payback is next, I believe. It's payback then, but they always do one or the other, don't they? Normally, after. Well, you keep talking, and I'll do the research. So I think that Joe is going to destroy Mysterio Jr. in this match. Whether it's against him or even if it's against Mysterio, I think Dominic gets involved. And I think, yeah, I think Joe destroys him. And I don't, I think this will be one of, one of the ones that Mania doesn't end. Oh, no. Dominic destroys Mania. I think this one continues past Mania. So we're going to have a Wade Barrett moment right here. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I've got some bad news. The next scheduled event is May 3rd in Saudi Arabia. Oh, God. And it's to be announced what it's going to be called. It's supposed to be 35. Saudi Arabia, Backlash, Takeover, Money in the Bank, Extreme Rules, which, why is this so far down? That's crazy. Then SummerSlam. What gets me is why are they... They've got... A day before Star Wars Day, they could literally have May the 4th be with you. Pay-per-view. I'm just going to send a quick email to um, WWE to, you know, not ever, ever hire you. <sighs> have we not gone with my booking tonight so far? I, I think you've had at least three. That's a really good statement. <laughs> <laughs> My birthday is on the 6th. What are y'all getting me? Uh, the same thing I got you last year. F all. I'll get, I'll get you another um, lot of fresh air. <laughs> you lucky so-and-so. But happy birthday! <laughs> um, one second, I'm just texting my sister. So, for me... 
if the match happens, Joe wins. Yep. Who replaces Ray if he is injured? Uh, I think Ali. No, I'm gonna take that back. No, I can't. Uh, Oh, I see. It. There's there, like you. There's who I think it is, and who I want it to be. Who I think it is is Ali. Who I want it to be is Andrade. Cien Almas. Don't change his name. The ass is formerly known. <laughs> I hated that when he came out as Almas. He's Andrade Cien Almas. I think I'm gonna go to Ali because I don't think they'll do a heel versus heel. And if it's yeah. Ali, I think I still think Joe wins. <laughs> so Joe wins basically, regardless. Joe wins, yeah. F Almas, F you! I should be cruising with champion as Almas right now. Just you know, he has got a universe series. I I'm Almas. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my. Uh, that's who. I, that's my thoughts, anyways. Uh, next match, and you think it's going to be the opener? Orton versus Randy. Oh, what a match! What are your What are your thoughts? This again. That's all right, Dad. I'm joking. What? This is literally how you build a feud in 2019. Oh, brilliant! It's been absolutely brilliant. It's just yeah, if you were that good, you would have been here a long time ago. Mate, when I was winning titles, you were failing drug tests. I am! And oh, all you bought is a, is a knockoff diamond cutter. You're speaking to me about knockoffs? Well, it's club. <laughs> I'm like, oh, damn, it's brilliant. <laughs> you know what, you know what I, I wish they brought up? Is... One of the things Orton said while I was many 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 WrestleManias, no one knew who you were. If you go back to WrestleMania 20, when Orton does his pose on the top, there's a person holding a sign AJ Styles sign, and they really? have it in the background. And the WWE didn't use that; like someone posted that. That is brilliant. That would have helped the storyline so much more. Mate, you need to tweet that at them and say, yeah use this <laughs> like even if it's in the video clip and the thing when is, he does that voiceover have that have that video playing when he does that voiceover the thing is I didn't believe the person thought it has to be photoshopped then WWE uploaded the, the uh, match to YouTube and I went and watched and that picture I saw on Twitter is there the guy is holding a sign that says sign AJ Styles while Randy Orton is doing his pose on the top row uh, is Mark streaming or not? Might have a better connection than no. Mark is not not streaming. Mark's on his phone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so who wins? This is a great overlay, by the way. Thank you very much, mate. Mr. KD Sweets made this literally like the, I couldn't ask for like a better overlay. Like I literally told him I want a room. Posters on the wall, and this is what I got. I, 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 I won't lie, Kenny. I'm sorry. I didn't think you'd be able to do it. Up until Tuesday, I would have said Orton wins this because I thought it was going to finish like it did on Tuesday. Phenomenal forearm into an RKO. Now I think he's going to. I think he's going to outsmart him now, and I think he's played his card. So I'm going to go at AJ Styles. Okay. Hmm. I think I think Randy I think AJ's going to get a win this, I, I lost this year I think I think it's going to get a loss I think that, arc, that Phenomenal 4 into uh, RKO I was like that's how it's going to end No it's happened now So you know what I think you're going to have He's going to go Phenomenal 4 Randy's going to Literally drop with the RKO Mm -hmm. So I'll line his back like, oh, I've been done here. Turn around, you know, like he's he knows it's coming. I think Mark needs to come buy me a beer. <laughs> um, uh, that's Daz. Oh, mate, I would have to come buy me. I miss that face. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I, I think Orton, because I think AJ won against Shane, AJ won against um, Nakamura. I think he's going to take an L this year. Otherwise, we're just going to have a new Undertaker streak slowly building up. <laughs> Do it! Um, next match is the IC telematch. Demon Finn Balor versus Bobby Roode. Uh, Bobby Lashley. There's one thing I want to mention about this. The demon, demon is supposed to be scary. You know, scary. Uh, with a... His promo, <laughs> you're going to meet the demon. <laughs> <laughs> I burst out laughing. How is that scary? I was expecting Lilo Rush to go, with a... <laughs> He got, he got to the demon. <laughs> uh, have you noticed it's no longer the demon king? Yeah, it's just the demon now. Because they're getting they're getting sued by someone calling himself the demon king. People sue him like other people so easy nowadays. Um, yeah. I think you're so you're going Bobby Lashley. Nope. <laughs> oh, I like going with the demon. Yeah, because the demon never loses. Nope, demon never loses. That's why he should have brought the demon to fight Brock. But you know, I yeah, I I still annoys me that he didn't go. I'm facing a beast, so therefore I bring my demon. Stupid, still stu annoyed me that. Stupid, stupid booking. Like he, we all know, he needs the demon to beat Brock. But damn it! But they had me for ten seconds when he hit that coup de gras. <laughs> I thought I believed. You know what? It's one thing like watching a false finish on TV. I've fallen. I I I'll embarrassingly say I fell for a false finish last year at Takeover. I can't tell you what spot it was because I don't actually know. All I know is, I'm pretty sure I thought Gargano got the pin, and I got up and I went yeah. And Matt just like grabs my arm and goes, "Matt, he kicked out." What? <laughs> I turned out what? I like we always talk, me, I can me, me, me no, and Matt I can always imagine. talk about this. I was like, what? He kicked out. Paul is in the crowd. I can imagine are a lot stronger. He said he kicked out, Martin. I was like, oh. <laughs> so I, I slowly just sat, sat back down on my seat, sat, <laughs> sat there. I was like, how could this happen to me? Made my mistakes. Um. But all false finishes are a terrible, terrible thing when you're in the crowd, because you always finish or fall for them. Um, another another mini match. I'm very disappointed with how this guy has ended up at WrestleMania because I saw something different for him, and I would let everybody know about it leading up to the Royal Rumble. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Who did you have different ideas for? Drew. Drew. Uh, when I went to, to Raw Manchester and Drew McIntyre like, beat Carnival, I was like, right, that's it. He's won the Royal Rumble. He's going to win the Royal Rumble. He is going to WrestleMania. He's going to become Universal Champion. That's the only thing I saw for him. And I said every, every damn day, tweeted every day saying, Drew McIntyre is going to win the Royal Rumble. You can quote me when it's done. I said a day of. I went up to the mother, I said, because I was watching uh, the WWE Now thing they do for every pay-per-view, I went up to the mother, I said, hey, look, there's the Rumble winner. Drew McIntyre was an injury at the time. And then when he got eliminated by Dolph, I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Um, that's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, we went back when we were speaking in the NXT thing. I said uh, about um, with Walter, how they've got a chance for like monster heels. Mm -hmm. They have got a 10 to 15 year monster heel ready to go here. But you have got to give him this win. I agree with you. He's got to, he needs to win. As much as he it's, needs... as much as it, it's a uh, Roman's back and he's back at WrestleMania, he's got the WrestleMania match after everything he went through. Um, See, I'm jumping ahead. Here. I think, right? 
I think he's going to beat him clean here, but that's not the last we're going to see Roman that night. I'm assuming we'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. But I and that's why this loss is not going to damage Reigns. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with you. I think Drew McIntyre on different reasons. That I think Drew McIntyre because he simply cannot lose this match. This is the match he needs as much momentum as he can for. Yeah, he loses this. He's 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 not getting Universal Title to no. Mania next year. No, at least. And I, 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 I we're gonna get to Kurt Angle now in, in a matter of moments. Uh, but I think Kurt Angle's last match should have been against Drew McIntyre in Manchester. It was such a good ending. He made Kurt Angle tap out to the anchor lock. Literally, I saw that. And I literally went back to the hotel. You can go to my Twitter. You'll find it. I said, after what I've just seen, Drew McIntyre is going to get a major flipping push. And so he should. He deserves it. He's been absolutely brilliant since he came up. Absolutely brilliant. But speaking on the terms of Kurt Angle, one of the most talked about matches, not for a good reason, but for a very bad reason. Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin and Kurt Angle's farewell match. I have my opinion on the match. I want to hear your opinion on the match. He does him in an ankle lock in under 30 seconds because he got him in the ankle lock on well it's going two ways he's even getting him an ankle lock in the first 30 seconds after getting him in the ankle lock Nick. don't forget this is how Raw went off ready for Mania mm -hmm. and then I think he's the, or the other thing is he's going to come out and say you broke my ankle I can't compete either way I think we're going to have a second unnamed Kurt Angle opponent Okay. Uh, I want to know, though, your opinion on the match itself. Uh, your opinion on the choice. Uh, it, it gives you what Corbin should be. Corbin is one of the best at getting you to hate him, to boo him. And this is perfect because everyone's like, no, it's not the match you want. And he handled it so well. He came out as like, I don't care about you stupid tweets. So I think... It's, a, it's not a bad, because the thing is, you should be going out on your back and promoting younger talent. Yeah, I think it's one of the things, one of the major points here is Kurt Angle handpicked everyone. Handpicked everyone. He picked Apollo Crews, he picked Jack Gable, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and Rey Mysterio. For me, it made sense. I know people were there, it should be John Cena, it should be John Cena, it should be John Cena. But where's the story? The story itself made because he was seen as first opponent. Yeah, but jo for John Cena to just show up and someone like Baron Corbin, as much as people don't want to admit it, and I'm sure there's people in the chat right now who don't want to admit it, Baron Corbin, as the Raw General Manager, was brilliant. Brilliant. 100%. Baron Corbin going to Monday Night Raw, the best damn thing to ever happen to him in his career. But just imagine, is if the music hits, Cena comes out in proper thugonomic gear, and Angle just looks at him and goes, "Who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm John Cena." And what is what this makes you man. think you can beat me? Ruthless aggression! <laughs> Bang! <laughs> they just do the whole match again, literally just a repeat of that match. <laughs> No, 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 not a repeat, but Cena beats him. Because Angle beat him. Mm. Cena beats him, full circle. I beat you, boy. Yeah, he did. That's a that's a complete possibility. Like, that Cena could come out, like as you said, Baron Corbin could lose. But for me, it was it's more of Corbin has worked his ass off. He's played a great, great character. As much as people don't want to admit it because they just hate Corbin for whatever flipping reason. Um, 
But Baron Corbin to me deserved a mania match, and this was a good match for him because it it's story. You know, we need to move on from the. You know, the, the John Cena and all that. Get many spots because they're around every so often. Like the Brock Lesnar because they're around every so often. And give it to the guys who are there working their asses off every damn time. Corbin is there. He was going to win the WWE title. Things happened. Plans changed. He went to Monday Night Raw. Was given something to work with. And he made the absolute best. And as Kirk said, this guy made my, my life as Raw GM and live in hell. Because... He wanted things his way. Now I want to get re revenge on him. He could get revenge. Been with 30 seconds. Well, I'm not really satisfied. That wasn't really a good retirement match. And then, as you said, John Cena come on then. Yeah. So and I, get, and I get what you're saying about Corbin, but this is one of the greatest ever wrestlers retiring. Yeah. That's why I'm going with Corbin. I yeah. think if... Corbin can win. If they give a win to Corbin, it could be Roman Reigns all over again. You know, like, I beat the person you love and I made him retire. Imagine if he comes out and he's like, I'm your Olympic hero. I'm your hero now. <laughs> comes out with a gold medal. Oh, you're brilliant. Like, I think if he can beat Kurt, that just helps. Instead of ending something there, that helps elevate Corbin. Yeah, I get it. So I'm gonna stick with Baron Corbin, but with, with, like this is Carino's like last last match in the WWE. So I asked Mark, "Am I gonna do one myself?" And you guys in the chat can put down your opinions as well. But our top five favorite Kurt Angle matches. I'm gonna let you start off with your number five. My number five. All right, let me get my list up. Okay, at number five. I have got Kurt Thangle versus Brock Lesnar. Which match? <laughs> really? <laughs> just, 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 just a quick question. What match? The the one Brock nearly killed himself in. Well, there goes my number five. <laughs> really? <laughs> number five: Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar, WrestleMania 19. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll tell you what, I've got I've got a lot of the for moments rather than Yeah, the match. that's what I've done. That's what I've done. Moments rather than match. There's this and one more that are that are matches and the other three are moments. The thing uh, mine are my, mine's a combination. Mine are matches and mine are moments. Uh, okay. Like uh, as well with mine. No, sure you know I will say mine is a uh, you know, a proper, you know, this is my favourite match, this is my number five match. Okay. But go okay, on. Number four. You tell me, why, why is this your, your your number five? It was just a different, it was just a different styles. Brock was just hot as any, and to fair, Brock kept up in this match, because Brock was fresh in this match. He was green still. Mm. And Kurt just guided him through, and for Brock Lesnar did a shooting star press. <laughs> and nearly killed himself. And Curse just picked him up like, come on, kid, we've got to finish this. <laughs> yeah. Like, I... I and and don't, forget, don't forget, that was Rock Austin Mania. Yeah. Then, and they upstaged that match so much. The thing is, I've got like little notes down, I'll show the stream. I have little notes down, and pretty much everything I have down is my notes to why the match was so good and why that match number five is literally what you said. And I've like, I, 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 a fun fact about the match, and if you guys haven't seen the Kurt Angle 24, it was a Kurt Angle 24 7, I think he mentioned this, but the match really didn't happen. Uh, Kurt Angle had broken his neck again. Yeah, he had surgery just after, didn't he? Yeah, he broke his neck again, I think it was on an episode of SmackDown, and Vince was, you know, you're not doing the match, you're not doing the match. Because, like, look, listen, I'll go for surgery straight after the match. We won't do anything crazy. <coughs> Shooting Stair Press. Kurt didn't do anything crazy. Just, I know, but I just, we won't do anything crazy. And but like, it, it, Kurt literally fought Brock Lesnar, as he likes to say, with a broken friggin' neck. Mm -hmm. So that's my number five. That's your number five. What's your number four? Number four, I've got a match that Kurt wasn't a big part of, but just because 
you forget I was in the era where Kurt was like I was fully kiddie in the attitude. I was teenager yeah, in the yeah. attitude era. So mine is the um, the six man hell in a cell. Ooh. The Armageddon was it? Arm- it was Armageddon, wasn't it? I think it was Armageddon. Yeah. Do you know what I love yeah, about that it's... pick? Do you know what I love about that pick? It, it's so different because looking at my list here. You've got the Attitude Era, whereas I really don't. Ah, okay. Oh, I've really got... I've got Attitude in quite a few of these. Oh, well, the best um, current moment will always be the milk truck. Oh, 100%. Go on. And also, um, Sexy Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'll just a sexy Kurt. Sexy Kurt! <laughs> I'll make your ankle hurt. So, so like I said, he wasn't... He wasn't that big a part of that. I'm pretty sure he won that match in the end, didn't he? He won the match, I believe. Match, but I'm pretty sure he had about five moves. <laughs> like, you look at your big spots in that, you had, like, Rikishi. Rikishi almost died. No, it's sawdust. He was fine. <laughs> a lot but of it, too. It basically like, you know when you put a big superhero movie together and then Spider-Man just pops up at the end? Yeah. Everyone just picks on Spider-Man. He was everyone just picked on him, but it was such a. It was so new. Six person Hell in a Cell. I just. I just always remember Kurt being in that match. Yeah. And he, he hung with the best. So yeah, that was my number four. Okay. Um, like I said, my one's completely different to yours. Mine's very based on when I was a kid as well. My number four is a match between Kurt Angle and The Undertaker from No Way Out 2006. Choice. The match was almost number three, like tr- like my number three match and my number four match are very you know head and head. Um, it was a great wrestling match. They yeah. really took each other to the limit, Angle and Taker, and even because I watched this match recently because I was watching back all the old SmackDowns, and yeah. I, I I Angle was like a really good like kind of heel in this. Like he he tried to take a count at win. By doing an angle stand through the announce table on the Undertaker, and even like just think of the match. Like it's it's such a hard match to describe. Like it was that good that they had to do it again on a SmackDown Live episode. I can't remember if it was the next one or was the was two weeks later that they they end up doing the match again. It was that got that like positive feedback. Mm-hmm. But to me, like that match. I, want to, I think it's my favourite Undertaker Krangle clash ever. So, on to number three. That, that was, if it was a top ten list, that would have been in mind. So, number three, I've got one of his worst wrestling matches, but it's the nostalgia because I have never seen a person come out in a gimmick that is supposed to be serious with the biggest smile on their face. And that is when Kurt Angle <coughs> joined the Shield. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His little face. It was his <laughs> first one back. And his little face was like, dude, I'm in the Shield. I, <laughs> I, I, I picture in... it now and going to the crowd and just there like, yeah. And he came out in the, he came out in the gear. and <laughs> It was just. So it was for no other reason than that is probably one of the happiest I've ever seen him in a West, in a wrestling ring. In a West <laughs> Wing? A West Wing Wing. It was in a West Wing Wing. It in WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turned the guy out of a Big Bang Theory. <laughs> um My number three, and you know, this was a great match to kick off a great pay-per-view and I can't remember what I was watching recently. Uh, I know what I was watching recently. I think, was it uploaded to YouTube or something the other day or someone did a top pick on it? And it was Adam Cole. Adam Cole was one of his top picks for the WWE Network to go watch. And he said it the mm-hmm. best way I could say it. Amazing way to kick off, kick off a, uh, a show. I praise it. If you have not watched it, go watch it. Current Angle versus Rey Mysterio, SummerSlam 2003. Yeah. Such this is, this is on my list. <laughs> such a fast-paced match for someone like Kurt Angle, and a great way to kick things off. You know, Angle was in the ring, Ray's music hit, and Angle's like, "Where is he?" Then Ray pops up behind him, West, you know, into the team, goes six one nine, completely misses, and a great way to finish as well. Ray goes for a Hurricane Rana, 
uh, Angle drops straight down instead of flipping and grabs him by the ankle and makes him tap out. Honestly, it, it, I know I tweeted out a while ago that was my favorite match, but then I remembered one match, uh, my number one match, that it was just so much better, but a great way to kick off such a great pay-per-view. Yeah, can't, can't complain. Like I say, it's, <coughs> it's coming on my match. It's coming yeah, on my you, match. Yeah, you, you can talk about it then. Um, so, number two now. Yes. Uh, number two for me was, again, for moments, not necessarily the match, but the match was, it was good, especially how much had happened before that, we got to that match, and that is Shane McMahon versus Kurt Angle, King of the Ring. Ah! Good choice. You know, you've, oh no, the spot didn't work. Do it again! <laughs> Do it again! <laughs> what? No, I'll kill you. Do it again! <laughs> so you... It was, like I said, one of the most iconic moments of his career, I'd say, for both of them. And that was through, that was kind of the stage that Shane was just like, why, just try and kill me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Steve like... Labman, try and kill me. Kurt Angle, try and kill me. Big Show, try and kill me. <laughs> it, it ended up sending both men to the hospital just so they could, like, get a good spot. <laughs> So, yeah, that's my number two for, like, one of those things. Just The, the thing I've got with this, this the whole Champa thing is, like, yeah, we know wrestling's fake and it's choreographed, but these guys literally, for our entertainment, they do stupid things. And I know they love it, and I know they get the buzz and the euphoria and the money, but they literally kill themselves. Yeah. <laughs> And that was the bossy son that was part of that. I'm pretty sure I remember Shane saying that Vince was not happy afterwards. <laughs> no. Fuming when they got backstage. Um, my number two match, and again, it's very much for moments. Uh, Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 21. Yeah, again, if this was top ten, I would have been on mine. Um, for me, I used to have a photo of it uh, on, on my wall. I don't know where that photo is now gone. I used to have a photo of when Sean went for the springboard crossbody onto the announce table and missed. And I used to have a, f a photo of literally as he was just springboarded off the ropes and about to hit Kurt. And I was, to me, that was always my favorite wrestling photograph. Mm. And the match itself was, it was a dream match. I'm not too sure if that was the match that wasn't supposed to happen and it was supposed to be Eddie. I know at some point Sean was supposed to face Eddie at WrestleMania. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if that, that was the original plan. Uh, but the whole match itself was absolutely great. And the fact that it ended with Sean, I, th I must have been for at least five minutes, just in an ankle lock in agony, trying to hold on, then eventually he just tapped out. So, Kurt versus Sean, that's my number two match. Number one. What's your number one then, huh? Okay. My Let me try one. and guess it. Where's your number three? <laughs> um, yeah. Mysterio versus Kurt. And part of the reason, like like you say, terrific storytelling. Why I've bumped this up against others is the simple fact the, the guys, I actually went back and watched it again this week. It was less than ten, I think it was nine minutes. It, it was a very short match. And for what they should have got, they should have had 20 plus minutes. And that could have gone down as like a steamboat match. Yeah. But the story they told, they both got offense. <clears throat> they both did chemistry. They both scared each other. Yeah. And like you said, the ended, it was just, it was just a fantastic wrestling match. A hundred percent agree. I think it's, that match would have been my number one as well. But as I said, I remember this match, and this match stands out to me as it had everything. It had comedy, it had wrestling, and it just it, it was an absolute phenomenal match. And again, with all these matches, if you've not watched them, go. And if you have, if you've not watched them, and you have the WWE Network, go watch them. My number one match is Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero, two out of three falls on SmackDown Live. Okay. I, as I said, it had 
everything between comedy, between Eddie and Kurt. It was a very serious match as well because the, the week beforehand, well, I think it was the week beforehand, it was a two weeks beforehand, uh, Kurt had thrown paint all over Eddie's lowrider and he was not, you know, very impressed. And like in the beginning moments of the matchup, like Eddie pulls down Kurt's singlet obviously reveals his ass and Kurt's like I don't need this shit I don't need this he starts to walk back and he realizes like what am I leaving for I need to beat this guy so like the first fall was a DQ uh, after Eddie low blowed angle the second fall uh, was a roll up from Eddie Guerrero and the winner after all that was Kurt I would say it was after oh yes I remember now Kurt won after an interference by Luther Reigns when he hit Eddie Guerrero in the back uh, with a chair. So, yeah. That's my number one match. Honestly, I would not put any other Kurt Angle match over it myself. Obviously, you've got different opinions, but it was a very, uh, it was a very good Kurt Angle match. And the fact his career is coming to an end now this Sunday is crazy how far we've come. But I'll tell you one thing is, I'm after seeing him these last few weeks, I'm so glad he's calling it a day. Yeah. He cannot go anymore. He's not a. It, 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 as I said earlier on, it's time he got past all those kind of guys and stopped relying he, on like current stuff. He struggles to do a, a German suplex. Yeah, I 110% agree. Which is why I also think the Corbin match might be short and someone who can carry him through a match would be Cena. Yeah. So. I look forward to the Kurt match, but moving on from the uh, Kurt stuff now, we have, I believe, three more matches to do, and then that's the end of the podcast. The first episode. Ooh, um, we've only done, like, 15 Mania matches. So yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so, I'm not going to look up any YouTube videos when I do the podcast right now, as I want to keep it going, and have little editing, editing to do as possible when I put this up on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, the next match is... The Miz versus Shane McMahon Falls can anywhere, which I predicted would be the opener. See, now I'm actually thinking about it. With it being the Falls Cat anywhere, I don't think it'll open. I think it will. Start off big. Yeah, possibly. It the, the demon won't start because it needs to be darker. Yeah, I think the demon will be towards yeah. the end. Um But remember, saying that terrible. saying that Bray Wyatt had a Daylight entrance. And Taker. Oh, it was awful. But, um... I think I think Miz... I think Miz has to win this. Okay. Um, for me, this rivalry, I think it's great. Because it's like one of those... like It's like watching a really good film. You think you know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And they plot twist. Y- I... I expected them to lose the chamber, and they did. And I expected them to do the rematch. But then, and I go back to the fast lane uh, prediction stream. I then expected Miz to turn on Shane and be the I don't respect you Jew and not me for all these years. Blah 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 blah. And then Shane turned on Miz, and I popped out of my chair. I was like, "What? Heal Shane? What?" So. This is a Miz I've predicted for a long time, and this goes back to when we were doing fantasy booking. I had a babyface Miz for a long time. I believe that was due to accident. Did you mean to book someone else and Miz ended up getting booked? No, that, that was Jericho. <laughs> was it Jericho? <laughs> um, but I... I, I mistaken sanity. I agree with you. Um... I think Miz is going to win. Like, go back to the Sunday match. I watched that yesterday. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, I watched it yesterday. Um, that's a, it's a very different side of Miz. You know, very more aggressive side of Miz. Go and tell you. Now, here is a weird thing that popped into my head earlier today when I was going through my predictions. I... It, it was because the three on one, that's what made me think of it. Was imagine if Shane recruits someone who we haven't seen for a long time. And this is why it can't open. So he's backstage. 
Boom, lights go off. Boom, lights come on. Bray Wyatt's there. Ooh. Where? That's a good pitch. That's a good pitch. Um, Bray Wyatt destroys Miz. One, Heel two, three. Here comes the money. It just ruins the moment that bit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's a good pitch. Um, and if Bray, because Bray is one of them people that become an instrument, you know, that people summon and like, because he needs something. He needs to come back and be something. As long as, like, as long as they don't do it the way they did Rowan, I'm all for it. Rowan's one was like, why is Rowan out here? Yeah. <laughs> what? He's ready to come back. Because then they can even carry it on, where, like, <clears throat> Jane can be like, Daniel, you've got our guy. And Rowan just turns on Daniel later on. It, it's all set there. It's like, Rowan, you're one of us. Why are you with him? And you can see, like, he pulls out the sheet mask and Rowan's like, ah, I can't. That's a good pitch. That's a very good pitch. I miss, I miss Bray as well. Bray, Bray's a very, he's not a very underrated uh, person. He's got a very short tolerance, which he didn't deserve. Because the only way Shane wins this is dirty. Yeah. The only way Shane wins this is using someone to his advantage. I think if they do something like that, um, it'll be during the match and it'll be, you know, when he desperately needs it. Yeah. Um, so that's, 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 a good, that's a good theory. It's a good, really good theory. Uh, moving I'm on. I'm, in, I'm going Miz anyway. <laughs> I got Miz as well. Uh, moving on to if the second. Happens, I'm gonna text you like, oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Are you still not watching it? Uh, at the minute, no. I've not got Monday off work, but ah. this it's it's happened before. It depends how early on it is. Daz, I will take your mod away. What's he saying? Just guess, and you'll understand why I'll take someone's mod away and ban them. Is it a female? Maybe. Shut up. Uh, next match. So the Universal <laughs> Tunnel's on the line when Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. Oh, this, this is what I want to happen and what I think will happen. Go on. <laughs> I think Seth's going to do it. I really want Brock to win just to kill everyone. The, the hate that would come on the internet. <laughs> There would be major, major hate. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I think Seth is gonna win. I don't know how exactly. I think for me, it's more of I want Seth to win. Um, yeah. But I just in my mind, my mind won't accept it. My mind is like, well, how can we do it, Martin? Like, look, look at him, look at Brock, look at him. So, it's like, I, I like other storylines. I can't go in depth into how I feel the storyline and everything has been. I would say the storyline has been pretty meh with the simple fact he won the Rumble and then there was nothing. Um, mm -hmm. um, but, like, it was, literally, it was literally Rumble, nothing, then storyline. So for me, I've not enjoyed the build-up at all. And I'm just going to go Seth for the sake of Brock losing the Universal title. No, I, I feel I, I hope Seth wins. But you you got to pick so, one. So one-dimensional Brock being champion. So who is your pick? Uh, I'm going to go Seth. Ooh. But I just can't be just because I'll be one of them trolls like, oh, for God's sake, again, Brock, really? But it's also hard to see what Brock does without the title. I think it'll be done. I think I think Brock is slowly coming to an end with WWE. It's like because know, it's, it's like he's not done yet. You, you can't book him in anywhere else other than being the champion. Like, well, what's he going to do? Like, Goldberg is not around anymore. That was something for him to do. Like, there's no other, mm -hmm. like, big guy, really, for him to do anything with. He's beat Braun. He's beat Roman. Drew's a heel. Do not make Drew face. 
No. Um, there's no, there's really nothing for him to do. What go rival with Triple H? Like, there's nothing really for Brock to do. So, I think if they do do anything, he'll probably go to SmackDown and do something over there. Mm. And I'd like to see his last run with the WWE being done with SmackDown. You know where he really made Brock Lesnar. Okay. I think Brock is UFC bound. Uh, so, are you done with that match? Because I'm pretty much done with that match. Yeah. On to the legitimate main event. The women's triple threat match, which I have a positive and negative outlook on. Now, winner takes all. Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte. It didn't need this extra bit. It did not need the SmackDown Women's title. No. It did not need the SmackDown Women's title. And I, I, I was very annoyed um, because it's like, well, what are you gonna do when you put the the title? You put the t- two titles on one woman. Do mm-hmm. not, do not, do not, do not unify those flipping titles. Mm-hmm. I know, because I, 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 I had put out like what, well, what's the plan with this and Liam have responded to me to get rid of the, the brand split that's the worst decision the WWE could ever make is get rid of that brand split they're not getting rid of the brand because there's a superstar shake up in a month oh they won't be but just I was like that's the worst idea you could think of they need the brand split look how many people they have and including the people that are going to come up next what way too many this this Seven, six, seven weeks ago, this was on fire. This feud, and they've touched too many times. I don't. The I, best I, I, I to think... build a feud is to have as little contact before the fight. Look at Triple H and Batista. Yeah. Look at Orton and Randy. They this they've had little skirmishes, but not every week. They've had a, a, like a jump attack and gone. Yeah. Just. But the thing is, like, you've got in in this rivalry, you've got Ronda Rousey, who's an ass kicker, Becky Lynch, who's the last kicker, and then Charlotte. Like, they're all like, it's bound to happen. They're all going to go absolutely apeshit kick each other's ass. And I, I thought this past uh, Monday was a good good addition to that story. I've enjoyed this story build. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, well, Charlotte shouldn't be in it." I think Charlotte adds to it. Um, and if you did not, if you seriously watched the WWE from Survivor, from Survivor Series to now and did not expect Charlotte Flair to be in that match, you are an idiot and need to stop watching the WWE. I just, I don't like, I don't like what they, they've, it's got too repetitive. And like I say, I, th- I think they'll. I think they'll absolutely smash it. I think they'll do brilliant stuff. I just, I'm ready for the match now. I was ready for this match four weeks ago. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, they're coming out and she's moaning, and then they're fighting again, and oh, they're moaning, and then they're fighting again, and it's like, yeah. And then the whole getting arrested thing. No. Someone put on Twitter, Becky's the new Austin, and they read it and went, oh, maybe we should get him to do she, We'll get her to do everything Austin did, but do it in three weeks. It's been a slow build. It's been a, it's been a, I think it's been a good build. Um, I agree with you. It has been a, gone on for a little longer. It did not need the SmackDown Women's title. Uh, both, t- both shows do not did not need all eyes on that one match. Um mm-hmm. I personally think the SmackDown Women's title match should have been Oscar versus either Mandy Rose or Sonya Deville. Um, but I think, I, I mean, there's no other logical winner out of this other than Becky Lynch. Yeah, I can make an argument for or any of the three winning. Go. Ronda, because she's not, if she doesn't go after Mania, and oh my god, the heat that would generate. Yeah. And her character now, although I don't 
totally agree with everything. It's like, oh, it's fake. It's no, you you you're still throwing the punches. You're still throwing the armbar. So don't you can't say that and then like sell. If if you're saying it's fake, then you get hit by something and you just shake off and go, it wasn't even anything real. Until Becky puts you in an armbar until you're screaming, and then you're like, oh crap, it was it was real. Charlotte, because it's Charlotte Flair. How can you ever discredit if she walks out with both titles? She is the queen. I proved it. I dethroned the baddest woman on the planet. I shut up your Becky Lynch chance. Pure heat. But I think Becky's going to do it because it's the last match. And maybe a nine times out of ten finishes with that iconic happy ending with both titles raised above me going, I'm an ass kicker. I kicked both their arses. So after all that, I'm going to go back in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I agree with you on Ronda Rousey. You know, with the character she's got right now, that's a very good, you know, to go with the whole wrestling thing. Like, I beat your bitch. Mm-hmm. That's all she's come out and say. Mm-hmm. Um... Charlotte, I think they gave the SmackDown Women's title for the sake of. You're taking the pin. Here you go. Wait, I'm taking yeah. the what? You're taking the SmackDown Women's title. And uh, Becky's in there to win it all. Yeah. I don't think Ronda Rousey's going after WrestleMania. I think she's going to stick around. Um, I am looking forward to the match. But I do feel by the time we get to that match, we're all going to be so tired. Yeah. Like, Which has happened the last few years. Yeah. Apart, I'd say the last one I was really hyped and awake for and ready to go was still Brian Batista Orton. Because you'd already got me invested in that match in the first match. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, I woke up at WrestleMania 31 when Rollins' music hit. <laughs> Mate, all right, here's, here's a funny story. So I was sitting on the couches over there, on my sister's night, the other one, and I was literally just hanging, hanging. And I'll never forget, because my sister jokes about it every WrestleMania. Seth's music's hit. I, it's like I just downed a thing of monster. Up, stand up, went, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> And no, I, I, I shouted so imagine. loud, I woke up my sister who, who passed out like three matches into WrestleMania. And she goes, whoa, whoa, what's wrong, what's wrong? It's like, Seth's cashing in, Seth's cashing in. Just imagine if they had it with his music now. They're both lying at, burn it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> you, you'd say it in your sleep. <laughs> you are half asleep. Burn it down! Who who, who set it on fire? (laughs) Who burned it down? It uh, it is eight hours, mate. Wrestle is confirmed at WrestleMania. This is also including the pre. I hope it's included the pre-show. If it's not included the pre-show, and I'm sat there for ten hours, WWE, I'm coming after you, Uncle Vince. (laughs) I'll be waking up to go to work and watching the main event. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um, but oh man Wrestlemania is going to be one hell of a grind but I every year I am ready for it because it is the show of shows uh, we've got NXT tomorrow night we have Hall of Fame which I'm going to watch on Sunday because I never watch it live I did one year I, I, when I went to uh, Texas I tried to watch it live and I fell asleep uh, and and What's it called? Um, WrestleMania then on Sunday. So, long weekend ahead of us. Yes. Okay, here you go then. Match of the weekend. Match of the weekend. Uh, I'm going to go with Cole versus Gargano. So I'm going to have to go someone different. <laughs> you know go. what? No. You know what I think about match of the weekend? Miz and Shane. Okay. I, AJ and Shane surprised us. They were the match of the, the, that weekend. I don't know Miz and Shane. I want them to surprise me. Okay, I'm going to go AJ Orton. Ooh, okay. 
or as, as the WWE now do, it's going to be Randy versus Styles. Just Randy versus Styles. No, no, no. Is, is, it, is it Alex? Or is it Alan? I'm trying to remember what the age is. I think it's, I think, I think it's uh, I'll get it for you, but go on with your, your conversation. I think it's Alan. Coming out. Randy! Yeah, it's Alan. It's Alan. Alan Neil the Jones. Crowd, the crowd just go, Alan! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm looking forward to this weekend. And I'm mostly looking forward to next weekend, and uh, next week, and the week after. Raw to Mania, Smacked Out to Mania, and then we'll return next week with the podcast for, to cover all that. Give you our thoughts on WrestleMania, thoughts on the after shows, and our predictions for the Superstar Shakeup. Which I look forward to every damn year. So that, that's a good for that's a good first podcast. I really enjoy this. I think so. It's like Fine, it's like I finally get to talk about wrestling again. <laughs> to be fair, if if mainly goes this quick, we'll, we'll be fine. The eight hours will fly by. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> me and Mark will be back again next week. Every Thursday, I decided we don't need to do the podcast more than once a week. Every Thursday, same time, 8 p.m. I swear we'll try and keep it live. We've been live for two hours, 20 minutes. Podcast has been going on for two hours and 16 minutes. I will try to lower it down. I will upload it's this. Really Everything goes longer. I know, right? I, I, I have down in my nose. I was like, I plan to have this podcast done in like an hour. <laughs> I was wrong. Um. I will be uploading this podcast uh, to YouTube tomorrow. I will probably, because it's two hours long, I'll probably do an hour. So, like, one like a, a, one part, two part. Keep it? All right, well, I'll do one part, two part. But I really enjoy I really enjoy this. I, I, I was looking forward to this for so long. You know, I, I said I want to do a podcast back at the Rumble. I went for it. I asked, and guys, if you do like the overlay, because I, I absolutely, I, I love it. I absolutely love this overlay. And I hope he is watching, because... People have said they absolutely love the overlay. Uh, Mr. Katie Speeds, Project Kenny over Twitter, made this overlay, and it's just absolutely brilliant. He made the overlay for, I'll show you now, the reaction stream, and he's made the overlay for the pre-stream. Oh, my God, the chat's gone over the pre-stream thing. I need to move that down. There we go. But I really enjoy, I, I really enjoyed this. And thank you, Mark, for coming in and doing the podcast. Yeah, my, but as my co-host, my and as a... <laughs> <laughs> this is my yard now, bitch. <laughs> so, I'll be, we will be back next week, same time, same day, all ready to go with our reactions to everything that happened this weekend, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. If you don't know, I do have my reaction streams. I do every pay per view. I will be live. Apparently, you won't die as a beer, by the way. Um, I'll be live. This Sunday, as just before WrestleMania begins, I will not be streaming the pre-show because who wants to sit through the pre-show? Am I right? I will not be streaming the pre-show. I will not be streaming NXT. I like to sit and enjoy NXT, and I, I never stay up for the Hall of Fame, like I said. But I hope you guys enjoy WrestleMania weekend, and I hope everyone has a great, great WrestleMania experience. So that's it for me. I'm done. Would you? I always did the outro on your thing. Want to do your outro again? <laughs> No, we'll save, we'll save my outro for a special occasion. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, from me and from Mark, thank you so much for coming out to the first episode of the podcast. And we will see you next week for the next episode. Adios. Enjoy WrestleMania. <laughs>